A Bermuda Triangle in space sounds so ridiculous, it's like a bad sci-fi movie. Of course there isn't one in Bermuda. It's over South America. Hey there everyone, Julian here for D News. You've likely heard of the Bermuda Triangle by this point, but in case you haven't, it's an area spanning from Bermuda to Florida and Puerto Rico. It's an area where supposedly ships and airplanes disappear for no obvious reason, and the culprits are said to be aliens or vile vortex or devil's graveyards or something equally ridiculous. The truth is the reports of lost ships and planes in this region are often greatly exaggerated and can usually be attributed to mundane reasons. Sometimes storms sink ships. Nothing really spooky going on here. But there is a place in space where space station computers crash, optical telescopes can't function, and satellites shut down. Because of the eerie similarities, the region has been dubbed by some the Bermuda Triangle of space. But there are a few key differences. As stated, its edge starts about 3,000 kilometers south of Bermuda. So a more accurate name, but less snappy one, would be the South Atlantic Anomaly. Then there's the fact that all the incidents are well documented and have a scientific explanation. The South Atlantic Anomaly was discovered in 1958 and is tied to the existence of the Van Allen radiation belts that were discovered that same year. These belts are ring-shaped areas of charged particles from the solar wind or cosmic rays that the magnetosphere has trapped. The outer ring is mostly high-energy electrons, while the inner belt is electrons and high-energy protons. These protons would strip electrons from atoms, so they're harmful to humans in high enough doses. They also can mess with electronics that aren't properly shielded. Luckily, the closest the inner belt usually gets to the Earth is about 1,000 kilometers. So if you stay inside that, you're good. But over Brazil, the inner lip of that belt gets much closer to Earth, as low as 200 kilometers. A ground dweller would never know the difference, but space stations and satellites fly right through it and are exposed to all those charged particles. At low inclination orbits, they'd go through it up to seven times a day. When it was first discovered, the radiation levels weren't enough to endanger humans or equipment. Since then, technology has gotten smaller and more sensitive, and the anomaly has become an unsafe place for electronics. Even though the ISS has extra shielding because it has to pass through the Van Allen belt, laptops on board are still prone to crashing. The Hubble Space Telescope will not take observations when passing through it to avoid damaging its delicate sensors. And in 2010, the radiation disabled most of an Air Force satellite, rendering it an $833 million piece of space junk until it could be fixed with a software pack patch, almost two years later. Apparently, whoever patched that was then hired to fix Assassin's Creed Unity for the PC. Boom! Yes, I'm still mad about that, Ubisoft. Anyway, the reason the Van Allen Belt's edge is so close to the Earth there is because they have Earth's magnetic poles as their axis, but Earth rotates around another axis, which is why your compass's north is not technically pointing to true north. That difference in axes means the Earth is leaning towards the belt, and South America has a bunch of radiation hanging out right above it. But it moves 34 kilometers east every year, so in a century, it'll be a problem whenever satellites pass over Namibia. And then both titles of Space Bermuda Triangle and South American Anomaly won't make sense. So, these Van Allen belts are spinning around and are caused by magnetic fields, which are caused by our spinning iron core, but why is everything in space spinning all the time? Trace talks about that here. Something, perhaps a nearby supernova, they think, caused the gases to begin to coalesce. And as the gravity of these particles increased, they began to fall toward each other and to spin. Space is a crazy place, and there's always more to discover there. If you have any probing questions, leave them in the comments or on our DNews Reddit page, r slash dnews, and we'll answer them if we can. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time on DNews.